Nissan has given us some of the best sport cars of all time. From Hakoska and Fair Lady Roadster to the 300ZX and Skyline. It's hard to point out the greatest Nissan sports car, but everyone has his favorite. But here we are going to talk about the Z series, starting from Nissan's earliest days until now. This video would be a 4 part series, since otherwise the video would be over 1 hour long. So hello guys and finally welcome back to another video and here is the story of Nissan Z. We begin in 1911, when Masujiro Hashimoto founded Kainsha Jidosha Kojo with the help of Kenjiro Den, Rokuro Ayoama and Maitaro Tekeuchi. Later he would change the name to Dat or Dato, how it was pronounced in Japanese by taking the initials of his backer's surname. The first car would come in 1915 under the name Dat 31. The car was powered by a 2 liter 4 cylinder engine, which later was bored out to 2.3 liter for the 41 model. The cars would be built until 1925. In the same year, that would merge with Jitsuyo Jidosha Seizo to form that Jidosha Seizo. At this point, cars weren't that popular in Japan. By this time, there were fewer than 15 cars. But after the Kanto earthquake in 1923, things would start to change rapidly and Japan started importing trucks and buses mainly from the US in order to get the country mobile again. This made Ford and GM to open plants in Japan in order to lower the cost of production. In 1931, that was acquired by Tobato Imono and shortly after this takeover, that changed its name to Datsun and shortly after this would change the name again to Datsun or Datosan, which actually didn't mean anything in Japanese. This was done because the owners believed that the name brought bad luck to them after a typhoon destroyed their factory. In 1934, Yoshisuke Akihaya became the president of Datsun, while Nihon Sangyo became the sole owner and changed the company name to Nissan Motor Co. The sales would continue to grow and by 1935 some cars were even exported to Australia. With Japan becoming more nationalistic in the mid 30s a lot of things would start to change in favor of the domestic brands and the 1936 motor car manufacturing enterprise law effectively ended most of the foreign auto companies activity in Japan. Ford and GM cut production drastically and eventually closed in 1937, with only Toyota, Isuzu and Nissan complaining with the new law. Also in 1937 Nissan would release the Model 70, which would become the first big hit for them. In 1939 Nissan would sell 18,000 cars most of them being commercial cars and with a big chunk of them being military cars. But the war also had a devastating effect on Nissan. Like most of the other manufacturers, the material shortage made it very hard for Nissan to manufacture anything besides some lightweight commercial trucks. The first post-war car would come in 1947. This was the DA, a sedan with a 722cc engine. This would be jointed by the DB, which was a more modern looking car. The sales continued to grow, this also helped by the Korean War of the 50s. 
the first sport car of Datsun would come in 1952. The DC3 was a lightweight convertible, following on the footsteps of the roadster which Nissan had built in the 30s. The car had a 860cc engine, which produced only 20 horsepower, but thanks to the lightweight body, the car could hit the top speed of 70 km per hour. The DC3 would be the predecessor of the Fairlady series, which Nissan would present later on. Despite all this, the Japanese auto industry was still behind the West. So the Japanese government encouraged the joint ventures partnerships. Nissan had a long partnership with Austin since the 30s actually, when they had built the Austin 7 under license. But this partnership would become stronger in the 50s. The first car under license would be the Austin A40, which later would be followed by the A50. The 50s would be quite a tough decade for Nissan, with the company basically going bankrupt, but being saved by the Bank of Japan and a number of laws put in place by the Japanese government, which were meant to help the auto industry. Also, with new roads being built and with most parts and materials being built locally, the cars were becoming cheaper to build. In 1957, Nissan would build the A80X prototype. This was a small roadster with a fiberglass body. The A80X would evolve into the S211, which made its debut at the 1957 Tokyo Motor Show. The styling, which was done by Yuichi Ota, which previously had designed the DC3, remained the same, but the engine was changed into a 1 liter engine with 34 horsepower. The car's low weight helped it to reach a top speed of 112 km per hour. Meanwhile, Nissan, like other Japanese car makers, was looking into selling cars abroad, with American market being the main target. Nissan would start selling their cars first in California in 1958, when they only sold 52 cars. But one year later, in 1959, they would sell more than 1000 cars. This mostly thanks to the introduction of the 310 Bluebird. Also, the 310 would be the first car to be sold in Euro as well, first appearing in Norway. In 1960, Nissan would present the SPL 212, which would be the first car to carry the Fair Lady name, a name which was a reference to the Mar Fair Lady Broadway musical show. The style wasn't that different compared to the S211, in fact, it was more of an evolution. The car was built with left-hand drive market in mind, mainly the American one. In fact, it was what the L meant. The SPL212 was based on the Datsun 223 pickup truck and differently from the S211 had a steel body and not a fiberglass one. The engine was a 1.2 liter 4 cylinder with 48 horsepower and with a top speed of 131 km per hour. Considering here the fact that the car was priced at $2000 around $19,000 in today's money, the car was quite a good value for the time. In 1960, Nissan would establish its American branch, confirming the company's desire to conquer the world's most important market. At the 1961 Tokyo Motor Show, Nissan would present a completely new fair lady, the Roadster. Codenamed the SP310 or the SPL310 for the left-hand drive market, this new sleek convertible was based on the 310 chassis. The engine, a 1.5 liter 4 cylinder, came from the Cedric and produced 77 horsepower. The Roadster was the first Nissan sports car that could easily go head to head with the best that Euro and America could offer. The car was designed by Hidehiro Izuka, which previously had only worked on the interior of the Bluebird. So the Roadster was quite a big step for him, and for Nissan too. Differently from the previous sports cars which mostly were hand built, the Fair Lady Roadster was developed with big production numbers in mind. The car went up for sale in 1963, shortly after the first Japanese GP, 
with a price of 880,000 yen in Japan and $2,500 in the States, around $22,000 in today's money. The car was a great success, Nissan would sell around 7,000 roadsters, with almost half of them going to America. In 1965, Nissan would present the SP311. Style-wise, the cars were more or less the same, even though it's worth to point out that the restyling was done by Albert von Gotze, which previously had designed the BMW 507 and later would go on to work on the 2000 GT and the 240Z. The biggest difference was the engine, which this time was a 1.6 liter engine. In 1967 would come the SR311, or more commonly known as the 2000, which would be the final version of the Fair Lady Roadster. This version featured a 2-liter engine, which produced 135 horsepower. Nissan also offered a competition package with 150 horsepower. In some markets where there were no emission restrictions, the competition package was offered as standard. Until now, the Fair Lady was offered only as a convertible, but in 1965 would come the Silvia. Underneath Silvia was a SP311, but the car was dressed with a gorgeous head-built coupe body. Differently from the Fair Lady, the Silvia was quite expensive, almost double the price in fact. So due to this, the first Silvia had a very short life only 3 years, with only 554 cars being built. Even though Nissan had built quite a large lineup by now, again, cars in Japan still were a luxury, with fewer than 6% of the population having a car by 1965. The auto industry was very protected by the Japanese government at this point, with a ton of laws being placed just to help the local automakers. But things would start to change in the mid-60s, with the American government pressuring the Japanese one to lower the taxation and the re restriction that they had on import cars. So in order to still protect the domestic car makers, the Japanese government suggested a number of mergers in order to make the industry stronger. So Toyota took control of Hino and Daihatsu, and Nissan took over Prince Motor Company. Prince was quite a successful company, especially by the mid 50s. Their lineup had such cars as the Sedan, the Gloria, and the R380. The latter one was a th the latter one was one of the first properly built Japanese race cars. The car debuted in 1965 and was built for the Japanese Grand Prix. Prince built the R380 in order to beat the Porsche 904s that were entered privately in different races in Japan. And in 1966, Prince would enter 4R380s, which would manage to take the overall victory against the Porsche 906s, among others. Nissan would continue to develop the R380 after the takeover, but that's a different story. But the most important car from the Prince lineup would definitely be the Skyline. The Skyline was the flagship GT model that Prince offered. The car was offered as a sedan, as a wagon, but most importantly as a coupe and as a convertible. But the story of Skyline is a story for another time. Meanwhile, the development for the replacement for the Fair Lady had already started. Around this time, a proposal from Yamaha would come to Nissan's hand and to other Japanese car makers proposal which would affect the industry quite heavily. At least the sports car won. But that's a story for the next week. So guys thank you for watching and see you next time.